we have a full house this week in the studio. Oh, Josie. <laughs> Josie, can you hear us? Of course, loud and clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. He loves you too, I, Josie. I, I, I've recorded everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to this storyboard special. I'm Shabani Gharat. Can Lion Festival of Creativity is round the corner and for those who are on the Can jury, it is added responsibility of judging some of the most creative, innovative and trend-setting work out there. This year, Can Lion will have 13 Indians as a part of the 290 experts from 46 markets. Today on the show, we have seven of those 13 jury members who will be at Can this year. Joining us in the studio, we have Sukesh Naik, Chief Creative Officer, Ogilvy India, who is a part of the Creative Data Alliance Jury. We have Rajdeep Das, CEO and Chief Creative Officer, Leo Burnett India, who is a part of the Sustainable Development Goals Alliance Jury. We have Aditya Kanti, CEO and Managing Director, DDB Mudra Group India, who will be judging the Creative Effectiveness Alliance. We have Farishta Irani, Group Head, Copy Densu Creative India and Alap Desai, Chief Creative Officer, Densu Creative West and Densu, who will be judging print and publishing lines and radio and audio lines respectively. And then joining us over Zoom, we have Josie Paul, Chairman and Chief Creative Officer, BBDO India, who is a part of the Creative Strategy Lions Jury. And we are joined in by Swati Bhattacharya, Creative Chairperson for FCB India, who is judging the Brand Experience and Activation Lions. All of you, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thank you. Thank you Let's begin this conversation uh, with you, Sukesh and Raj. Uh, 13 Indians as a part of the Can Lions uh, jury this year. The number has increased over the past uh, couple of years. You both are Can Lions veterans, so to speak. Uh, can you uh, tell us, uh, Sukesh, let's begin with you. What does it mean for India as a country? I think the work that we've been doing in the last couple of years has been truly world class. And uh, that is... The reflect, this is the reflection of that, I think. And uh, also the work we are doing is now winning uh, in categories which are truly modern and new age categories. So while globally Indians are of course doing extraordinary work in different fields, I think in our business, we are now in the recent times doing work which is just uh, coming to the notice of everybody around the world. Raj, over to you. I think uh, there was a time uh, the world has to look and see Brazilian work, there is uh, Argentine work, there is Japanese work, uh, there is very much US-centric work. But now it's uh, very much Indian work. Mm. Uh, I think the world is looking at our work and says, uh, have you seen how India did it? Uh, I remember people sending the work as a reference now, and that's the biggest example of how Indian advertising has become the benchmark of world advertising. And this is just a beginning. And much more to go, I'm telling you, you're going to change. Things are going to change for us. Josie, Swati, your thoughts? You two also have been can veteran. I've been seeing you on uh, Promenade de la Crossette. Uh, you're on here. Completely agree with what Raj said. And I think, you know, Josie being on this call is important because I think it all started a little bit with Share the Load where, where we were looking at work which was not just one-off press, or, uh, you know, it was like an entire platform, which the whole world thought was like uh, incredible. So I think our journey started from there when it was not just one dazzler, but we were creating connection platform and returning year on year with work on that. Josie? Thank you, firstly, Swati, for saying such sweet things. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think it's about contribution and influence and the way India's diversity and diverse clients and diverse creatives have offered. And when I say creatives, I mean everybody who's been part of the process mm. has offered such new magic to the industry. We've actually, therefore, uh, been a very influential force. And that is why uh, I think this uh, increased jury members uh, like uh, Sukhej, Sukesh so said is a reflection of that influence. Okay, Farishte yeah. and Alap, what are you looking forward to the most? Let's begin with you. For me, it was just the idea of meeting everyone in person, gathering all these very diverse perspectives, right? Because I'm talking to people from, from France, I'm talking to people from like North America. All these different perspectives that force you to question your own creatively, because I think as creatives, we tend to get really attached to our own mm. way of looking at things, right? 
and then suddenly there's a person with a completely different culture who forces you to question your opinion on a certain entry. And there's no way to go into an experience like this and to leave it without having learned something. So I think apart from actually reviewing the work and celebrating the best of creativity, I'm really excited to become a better creative myself. Yeah. Alap? Yeah. So, so around 15 years back, you no, know, Can had this campaign line which was uh, which was that big ideas make you feel small, mm. right? Mm. What it and that's what I think we we in our shells and in our, in our daily lives become so so used to what is around you. Mm. And so I'm honestly looking at a hum looking forward to a humbling experience, honestly, yeah. because while I'm being a part of the initial jury discussions, while I'm looking at the work, I can see that ideas that are bigger. They're better. They are so much more grander, and they are so beautifully executed. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to learning and being actually becoming more humble in life. Honestly. Ideas that are bigger, <laughs> yeah. so much more grander. But also, it's no longer just about celebrating creativity, Aditya. Mm. It's uh, your category, which is creative effectiveness, has been awarded across uh, different categories, and you're judging creative effectiveness this year. Uh, what are the general trends that you are seeing in the category that you are judging? You're seeing three types of work. There's work that is a uh, core brand uh, and it's really brilliant to see to Swati's point mm. serious long term commitment to creativity on the biggest brands in the world right mm. paying off um, yeah. in, in spades the second category of work is is brands who are investing in in uh, purpose led work which is core to the brand as well which is mm. which, which is great to see too and the third is creativity being applied to uh, the the ngo sector to uh, policy related problems to societal change and i think what's what's interesting is that you're seeing a good mix of all three and a, 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 an effort mm -hmm. for more and more work to be closer to brand and and commercial outcomes which i think is brilliant so raj over to you sustainable development goals a category in which you have won a grand prix Yep. last year so yep. you're already wearing the crown for the year for uh, the category can you tell us what are the trends that you are seeing in the category what are the campaigns and what is the kind of work that is standing so out? i will i will first uh, break that into two phases okay yep. now, phase number one is the kind of people who are judging uh, people who are judging is not from advertising background i think there's two of us are, uh, yeah two people who are from advertising background you have people from un mm. people from uh, world bank uh, people from uh, economic forums who are sitting there so you can't bullshit them yeah. It's very clear. It, it, they they know the world problems are, mm. and and there are a lot of fake problems that people create. Mm. The best yeah. thing about the industry is our job is to solve human problems, and with the brands like the epic brands, epic work that happens. But a lot of people create a fake brand, and you can just scan through that. Mm. But at the same time, yeah. then come the second part. You see the amount of brands getting into changing the world mm. in a good way is amazing. Mm. Like. One category I remember, like it's world peace. It's called a category called peace, mm. and I'm getting goosebumps talking about the amount of work and the kind of work we are seeing for Ukraine mm. is yeah. is mind blowing. Mm. Yeah. You know, then water, mm. the projects, what's happening? How biggest brands are spending mm. money mm. to get the water project happening? Farming, mm. how brands are changing the way world farm, mm. the farming, agriculture industry is happening. Mm. You're actually change seeing the. Not the outside of the brands, but inside how they are changing the ecosystem. Mm. That's just amazing. It just amazes you. Like wow, mm. you know, I was lucky last year. It's like that. You can feel that. You know what I'm mean? saying? <laughs> and very humbling. What you said, right? Humbling. It says, way to go. Way to go. It is time for a short break. This discussion with the Indian jury members for Can Lions will continue. You don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Brand versus media. Welcome back. We have a full house this week in the studio as we are joined in by seven of the 13 Can Lion jury members who will be judging work that typically sets the benchmark for creative excellence at the 70th edition of the Lions this year. A creative data, Sukesh. Uh, uh, it's also been uh, like a year where you know phasing out of third party data has happened this year what are the challenges what are the trends that you are seeing in uh, this category what is the work that is standing out so i think uh, first it's just insane mm -hmm. what people are doing uh, in this category because you know our work was meant to connect with consumers mm -hmm. and there is no 
better direct connect than this, is, which is real time data. And yeah. some of the brands, big brands, are doing extraordinary ideas, brave ideas that actually make you feel taken care of as a consumer, mm. heard of, right? And it's not just, I understand the whole concern and that's one of the biggest dis uh, discussion of, you know, third party data, data privacy, all of that. Mm. I guess most of us, when we interact with anything that we currently buy, purchase, or, you know, subscribe to, we have given, and when we have given a data to it, what the brand does with it, mm. yeah. and what and how creatively it is used, right? Mm. Remember the days when newspapers were stuffed with leaflets and they just fall apart and used to go in the dustbin, literally? That's like, that's like really bad stuff, right? But I think the kind of stuff that I'm seeing, and again, point Aritya mentioned, if we as an agencies, if we as creative custodian of brands, yeah. mm. don't lift our game and don't mm. do work which is gonna drive business by yeah. getting the kind of information that they're getting literally. It's like this data is not, you know, got by so much of hard work. It's literally there. Mm. It's in front yeah. of you. So if you, if we as idea agencies or partners can't use our imagination to interact better, mm. I think our future will be in question. Like he said, let's see classic categories of it. There are pro bono stuff. There's brand stuff. There's policy stuff. Yeah. But I think... My feeling is as a, as, a, as a jury of a group, it's very clear mm. that something has to truly make a difference mm. in whichever section it belongs to yeah. for it to be rewarded. And if someone is just entering for what Rajesh point, fake problems, mm. he's going to get flagged yeah. off and gone out of the window in two seconds. Mm. This is something that has been, uh, you know, the category of print and publishing has been marred yeah. with <laughs> this issue. So, what are the trends in uh, this category and what is the kind of work that you are seeing? Do you also see this kind of work as well? So, so Even now? I'll tell you what, right? I think that purpose-driven work is very important. But at the same time, I think that we've almost started taking a gross amount of advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So, there are ads that, that you can almost smell a scam over there, right? It's mm -hmm. like, okay, I don't think this problem actually exists. And the thing is that jurors aren't idiots i mean we 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 do have some common sense right so so the way that i tackle it is that i'll just do a quick google search i'll trust my instincts i'll do a quick google search and then once you figure out that this is glorifying a certain issue that maybe isn't as big as the ad is making it out to be then it automatically affects the score right so so if i was on a score let's say a five on ten mm. it automatically just goes down to a three Mm. Right. So print and publishing definitely has that problem yet. But at the same time, something that I find really interesting, apart from the obvious purpose driven scam work that I think every category tends to face, is that uh, it's a very modern category now. Right. So I'll be honest, I entered uh, the category slightly skeptical because all of us grew up falling in love with mm. with our favorite print ads. I mean, that's what got me into this industry. Right. But we also have to accept the fact that the world is changing. Social and influencers may be a bigger category now. Mm. But when I started judging the work, the quality was fantastic. Mm. Uh, we were starting to redefine what traditional craft meant because maybe about 20 years ago, craft was this great line. And it still is a great line, but then now it goes beyond that, right? Craft is 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 how you use AI, mm -hmm. right? Is it a falsehood? Because now I think AI is the new kid on the block that every single agency wants to play with, yeah. right? But is it a falsehood, especially with a category like a print and publishing? Mm. Um, I've also noticed a lot of brands uh, capture real moments now, which I find very interesting because I feel like that's a very Gen Z way to approach things, mm. right? Because Gen Z is all about being raw. Mm. Gen Z is all about being unfiltered, unpolished. So I've so so I've started noticing brands capture real people in these unpolished moments, which I think started yesterday, which I think started last year, mm. and it's kind of amplified this year as well. So I can sense the category almost revive itself. Mm. And I think that's important because at the end of the day, mm. print and publishing 
You can't do away with it, man. It's a <laughs> it's a category. The category has revived itself. What yeah. about uh, Radio Alap? So, it's in this visual world. What are the kind of entries and what are the kind of uh, yeah. what is the kind of work that you are seeing? So there are there are two parts to the radio uh, uh, category that I'm in. There's radio and there is audio innovations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now radio, I'll, I'll come to radio, but audio innovations. I'm seeing a lot of generative AI, mm -hmm. the run of the mill. We are seeing a lot of that. We are seeing a lot of Gen Z engagement. At least, what how I at least look at things is we get obsessed with tech. We we feel that that tech is everything and yeah. tech is everything. Tech is not everything. How you use tech, mm. or what is how it marries with the idea, or how it's been polished into into delivering on an insight is what tech is all about. So that's what I'm looking at in audio innovation. Over to you, Josie. What are the trends that you're seeing in the category? Uh, the beautiful thing about it is, uh, you know, it's so it's so new for me to be honest. So I don't want to be uh, like, you know, I don't want to be the judge. I just want to be the receiver. And uh, what I find, what I'm looking for and what we are all looking for is the source of the idea, right? And that's the sacred space. It's like the source of the Ganges. Hmm. And, and, and you can feel it and you can sense it. And whether it's an observation or whether it's coming from, uh, you know, big data or any other forms of starting points mm -hmm. is really fascinating. So I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just letting it hit me. And then I say, hey, wow, that starting point was so incredible. Mm -hmm. It changed everything. And then, of course, you got to look at the impact because in yeah. creative strategy, you're, you know, we're looking at the starting point and we're looking at the impact as well. So this is something new for me and I really love that. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about going to the source of the Ganges. <laughs> okay, Swati, so, over to you quickly. Uh, what are the trends that you're seeing in your category? So, um, you know, brand experience is one of my favorite categories because, like, I always feel that intimacy is the algorithm of creativity, and in ex brand experience, you get to see more of that. Yeah. Hmm. But a little bit like what Alap was saying, I'm finding some bits. I still have a, a lot to judge. But I feel all the metaverse ideas, as if the only way to collide with your consumers has now become metaverse and AI and technology, yeah. you kind of find the interaction of that. It, there's a kind of sameness. Maybe mm. the first five, you feel, wow, look at the way they've mm. gone ahead and done it. Yeah. But by the time you're looking at the hundred, you're... You, it all kind of looks the same. Hmm. But there are other categories within brand experience I'm seeing like real genius work and it always turns out to be like uh, really what a big brand has decided to do uh, not just in one market hmm. but you know in three or four markets. So that that alone gives it like a scale and a power. Hmm. Hmm. But yes. Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, over to you, uh, Raj. We have seen how, like, you know, most of these award shows are also very imbalanced in terms of, you know, some entries or some, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, some campaigns winning a lot of uh, yep. awards. So, is it something that you are also seeing, like, uh, one campaign coming up a lot in conversations this year as well? See, Shivani, I will just tell you, see, that will, every year it will happen. Yep. Uh, mm. I remember the one that actually changed the way Khan's was accepting award show, all the entries, was Dumb Wish to Die. Dumb Wish to Die. <laughs> because Dumb Wish to Die made everyone forced to say you can't have more than six categories. Yeah. But uh, that you can't stop it. But what you can, as a judge, you can wait and watch is a shooting star. That is the future. And the future is moved very fast. Just your job is to go through every piece of work, every piece of crap, every piece of beautiful work, every piece of crafted work, every piece of every nice things to wait for that shooting star. It may not win big because you may like it, but some people may not like it. Yeah. It may be just a bronze or anything. But your job is to make sure that comes mm -hmm. out. So when millions of creatives around the world see sees the, that piece of work, this is what about this is what future is going to be and having said that also at at the same time like you know you have to see hundreds of entries hundreds of campaigns together how are you dealing with or coping with uh, you know the fatigue of going through all of these entries sukesh it's a very working can for me uh, personally because uh, it's hard work okay so 
uh, but I think that's a role that we do, so we have to just live with it. So it's a lot of midnight uh, gone yeah. into this because you can't do this in the day. It's not possible because someone the other walking in, you know, some you just need to concentrate. It's a lot of going back and forth because, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, what uh, we were talking earlier that the entries are so complicated yep. just to understand the, yeah, because, like yeah. Josie said, the source yeah. of it, right? The source of it is really what's very important. How, what were you trying to do and what was the brand trying to do? Yeah. Uh, did it need it to be done? Uh, and is it part of your business problem or not problem? So I think if you can answer, if you can figure these out, and that's when it truly stands on and say, wow. On that note, I have to ask you, and this is like the golden question. Uh, let's begin with you, Josie. Uh, what according to you or what are the kind of campaigns that you are seeing uh, have uh, Indian campaigns, I mean, have a chance to win? You know what, I've signed some document here. Yeah. <laughs> that I nice try. <laughs> nice I, try I, can, I, I can only say that this year is going to be bigger than last year. This year is and going to be think, bigger than... And last yeah, year we yeah. did win quite a lot. Yeah, but I think this year the width and depth of work that I've been seeing is so beautiful, so amazing. that And, and the echo factor of what has happened last year, I think, and the, and the general positivity towards work from India... All of this together is going to help India uh, win a lot more and be recognized as a creative uh, force. Uh, difficult to get into individual pieces uh, because uh, I rarely sign these documents. I've done it, but... Aditya, <laughs> your thoughts? Josie is hilarious. No, I think Josie is absolutely right. It's, it's, it's an exciting time to be in India and it's an exciting time to be a creative practitioner because if you believe in the power of creativity to change things, hmm. I don't think there's a better time. Better time, right? Hmm. So whether it is in terms of the types of challenges that we are dealing with, whether it's the scale hmm. at which yep. we're being allowed to apply some of that with our clients hmm. and with the problems that we're, it's an extraordinary time. We are just getting started though. So it was landmark year 2022 for India. Also, Densu Creative uh, came up with uh, a bag full of uh, glorious metals from CAN last year. Your thoughts on uh, the campaigns that are standing out this year? Yeah. I think that right now we are at a place where uh, we need to retain talent more than ever. We need to prove to the 21 year old that, hey, you know, I get that your parents are probably forcing you to become an engineer, but if you write well, if you have that creative bone, then you should probably consider this uh, this job that will take a while to pay off, but once it does, it pays big, right? And I think that uh, India specifically, we 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 need to inspire people to to stay in agencies, and apart from that, we need to retain talent within the country because I do see a fair few young talented folks looking at different markets. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is that the only way we can prove to them that this is a market to stay in is to keep creating work that excites them. Mm -hmm. Because even if this 21 year old won't be the next big CCO, maybe that 21 year old will be a really good copy supervisor who will find the next big CCO, right? Allah? You own your or your your culture and you turn mm. that into yeah. something interesting. Japan used to do that for a really long time and Japan still does that mm. beautifully. Now the world is paying attention to India. Mm. I yeah. think this year the pieces that we have, I'm also I echo what Aditya and Josie were saying that this is a good year to for us to be in because the because of last year's haul, everyone wants to look at something new from India. Mm. Right. So I'm excited. I'm so high pressure. High pressure. High pressure? Super high pressure. High pressure. No, no. no. I, I think I have a very interesting take on this. Yeah. I believe uh, last year, <clears throat> a very, very uh, senior client. Hmm. Uh, many people call you to congratulate you when you win. Hmm. When a client calls you to ask you, why did I win a silver only and not a gold? That means you're doing something great. <laughs> yep. You're doing something yeah. fantastic. Because that means the, the business hmm. wants to and cares for being recognized. Hmm. For me, it trumped all congratulation calls, honestly, if you ask me. Hmm. And I told myself and the team when I came back that this person and the brand deserves the attention because if they were concerned about why they got a silver and not a gold, hmm. they're very good times you're in as, as, a, as a country, and how as do a you business. Answer that? How do you answer this question? You try harder. The good part of CAN is it pays detail 
attention to cultural nuances yeah. which is why you would see at can unlike other award shows mainly a lot of work from you know far east india south subcontinent yeah. like pakistan for example winning two grand prix right mm. i think the, the fact that it pays or are willing to listen to cultural nuances and understand yeah. and give you the time of his day it works yeah. and coming to a question that you asked yeah, me touch the pickle for example, yeah, for example i was yeah, having yeah, yeah, a conversation yeah. with yeah. josie on uh, the red carpet after yeah, yeah. one for touch the pickle I, absolutely and, yeah, and, and coming to a question that you asked me yes. right now so while nobody answered it i would yeah. wish my dear friend here sitting here who's having a good run yeah. so far <laughs> i wish he wins and comes back because he is so far doing phenomenally well in the global award circuit so i hope he brings back lots of trophies wish them all the best because they did very well wish my friend here josie everyone why not i think all of us have put our best work forward yep yeah. win or no win yeah that's a question of a group of people that will be sitting in the room and deciding yeah. hmm. but i think uh, what we're doing as a country is as an industry is will hopefully answer her question <laughs> a 21 year old sees worthwhile like with i did 21 yeah. to give up I mean something I was doing something quite different to give up that and come here and yeah. was an unheard of thing even in my time. Hmm. So I'm sure if we do great stuff some young people out there will see reason and you know and parents will probably support them to yeah. just come and join us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks Swati. Thanks Josie for joining us over Zoom. Thank you so much guys for joining us Thank in you. studio. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. With that it's a wrap on story board this week. You can catch all of our content on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time next week. See you soon.